Transform Analysis of LTI Systems, Part 4. First talked about OPAS systems. We say HC is an OPAS system if the magnitude response of H is equal to 1 for all omega. So if we plot the magnitude response is simply a constant, does not vary with the frequency. But if we look at the phase, the phase will be a function that can vary with the frequency. This is an example of OPAS that we have seen before. Hn is a delay, and Hj omega is e minus j omega, and the magnitude is indeed 1. An OPAS system is a sort of trivial. It has only one non-zero coefficient. Let's look at a more non-trivial example. Such an Hz is called an first-order OPAS. It has a pole at D and 0 at 1 over D conjugate. So D here and 1 over D conjugate. It's interesting that the pole and the 0 happen to be conjugate reciprocal pair. Now let's see why this is an OPAS system. Frequency response H E J omega. We substitute Z with E J omega. This is what we get. And uh, let's pull out E minus J omega. Then we get two terms. This is the E minus J omega. Let's pull out. And here at the numerator and the denominator, we observe that they happen to be compass conjugate of each other. The numerator is the conjugate of the denominator. So we get the magnitude equal to 1. And this is indeed an OPAS system because at 1 pole and 0, we call it a first order OPAS. Really suppose H is a product like so. Each term here is a first order OPAS, and HZ is the product of N, K from 1 to N, in such first order OPAS. Then the magnitude of H is simply the product of magnitude of HK, and uh, it will be equal to 1. So such an H is a OPAS. And it's a nth order OPAS because now it has n poles and n zeros. Let's look at the phase of OPAS systems. The magnitude of OPAS system is sort of not so interesting because it's a constant. Let's start with a first order OPAS. Hz is a causal stable OPAS. And the pole D expresses R E J theta, R is less than 1. So the pole is inside the unit circle. And the frequency response, as we have seen, is like so. Let's first express the numerator term here as a magnitude and a phase. This is phase function, we call it phi omega. Then the phase function of H we call R gauge is minus omega plus 2 phi omega. This is because we put in this expression here with this expression. So we get the numerator like so. And the denominator is simply the conjugate of the numerator. So we get an extra minus j we get an extra minus here, so this is the phase function of H. So we have the phase function of H written in terms of phi. Let's look at what phi is. Phi of omega is the phase term of this. So let's uh, use the expression D is equal to R E J theta. This is D. And uh, we Write down the real part, 
This is the real part and the imaginary part. Then we get phi of omega. It's the arc tangent of the imaginary part over the real part. Definition, the, de the group delay is the derivative of h of phase function with the negative. And uh, after we work out the details, this is what we are going to get. The group delay, a closed form. It has 1 minus r squared as the numerator and um, a denominator that is the magnitude squared of this term. The conclusion that we can draw from here is that this group delay is going to be greater than 0 if r is less than 1. And uh, we have already assumed that the d, is a, d is inside the unit circle, so r is less than 1. Root delay is the negative of the slope. It's always positive, so that means the slope is always negative. And this means the phase function of a first order or pass decreases with the frequency because the slope is always negative. Here we have an example of the phase function of a first order or pass. For the case, theta is equal to zero. In this case, the pole d is simply r. And we have plotted the phase function for different value of r, r equal to 0 0.1. This, this line here is this color. This is the case of r equal to 0 0.1. And r equal to 0 0.3 is the red curve, and uh, r equal to 0 0.9 is this green curve. And we can see that they are all monotonically decreasing. In the case of a more general nth order of pass, it's a product like this. Or if we have real Hn, we can express this as a product of first order term. All these pole zeros are real, and the second zero and the second order term, the coefficients in these second order term will be real as well. Here are a couple of questions. First question is the group delay of the nth order or pass going to be positive as well? That's indeed true because if we consider the group delay of an nth order O pass and we write it as like so, then the group delay of an nth order O pass is the sum of group delays of a first order O pass systems. So this property will hold. We can also conclude that the phase function of an nth order O pass decreases with the frequency just like a first order or pass. The thing that we can conclude from here is that suppose Hn is real and uh, the phase at omega equal to zero is equal to zero, then because of the decreasing property of the phase function, the phase function will be negative for omega between 0 and pi. And that concludes our discussion on O-pass systems. On six minimum phase systems, recall we say a system H has a minimum phase if all the poles and zeros are inside the union circle. In this case, both H and its inverse can be both causal and stable. So we are given a system H. It's not minimum phase. The pole is inside unit circle, but the zero is not. Questions that we would like to address here. The first, is it possible to have a minimum phase system that has the same magnitude response as H? H is not minimum phase, but what we would like to have is a minimum phase system. So is it possible to have a minimum phase system that has the same magnitude as H? At least they are the same in magnitude. And that's indeed the case. Let's see how we can do this. 
h is this one. Let's multiply 1 minus c inverse of the numerator and denominator. We can rearrange it like so. 1 minus dz inverse, 1 minus cz inverse, and move this term here. And we observe. Both c and d are inside the unit circle. So, there we go, a minimum basis system. And what do we have here? 1 minus cz inverse, c inverse minus c conjugate. What do we have here? An L pass. So we have a minimum phase term and an L pass. Remember, an L pass does not change the magnitude. So if we take magnitude on both sides, if we have the magnitude of H will be the same as the magnitude of, of H mean. And they have the same magnitude response. So given a first order system H that does not have minimum phase, we can derive a minimum phase system that has the same magnitude response, the same as H. Generally, we can have this result. If we are given a general rational causal stable H and zeros not on the unit circle, then we can always express it as a minimum phase system and an opass system. We will leave this as an exercise. And because of such a relation, it follows that the phase of H is the phase of a minimum phase system and the phase of an opass system, which will be very useful later when we look at the property of a minimum phase system. Problem we would like to address. Is it possible to find a G such that the product is O pass? We may have a signal XN that's passed through some system H and we get the signal Y. Now we would like to get back X. Well, H is something that's given. It's not always possible to invert it. But is it possible that we can pass Y through a system G so that the output W would at least have the same magnitude as X? If we express HC like so, it has a minimum phase part and an opus part, we simply choose G to be the inverse of H mean. Then the product, what is the product? H mean, HAP, that's H, and then G, 1 over H mean, then we get HAP. So the overall system, the product of H and G is an O pass. So this is an O pass, and X and W would have the same magnitude. Get some properties of a minimum phase systems. Suppose H is causal, stable, zero is not on the unit circle. If we express it as H mean and HAP together. Now suppose HAPM is real and uh, the phase of HAP at omega equal to zero is zero. Okay. We define something called phase lag. The phase lag is the negative of the phase function. So now we express the negative of the phase function as using this expression we have the phase function that will be the sum of the phase function of H mean and the phase function of HAP and that will be the phase lag of H mean and the phase lag of HAP and we know when HAP is real and uh, its phase at omega equal to zero is equal to zero, then it's the phase function is always negative. So the phase lag is always positive. 
This means in particular, the face leg of H is always larger or equal to the face leg of H min. And we can have this result. H min has the smallest face leg among all systems that have the same man to response. Property of minima phase system is about its group delay. The group delay of H, if we use the expression, the group delay of H would be the group delay of the minimum phase system and the group delay of the O-pass system. And as we know, the O-pass, for an O-pass, the group delay is non-negative. And this means the group delay of H is greater or equal to the group delay of the H-mean. Therefore, H-mean has the smallest group delay among all systems that have the same magnitude response. Pretty we would like to mention is the minimum energy delay property of a minimum phase system. If we consider the impulse response of H-mean and the impulse response of H, and we sum up the impulse, the energy of H-mean from 0 to L, that is the first L plus one point of the impulse response of H mean. And the right hand side is the energy from N equal to zero to L of the impulse response of H. And this inequality is true for all L. This means the first L plus one coefficient of H mean has more energy than the first L plus 1 energy of H. And that also means the energy of H mean is more concentrated around N equal to 0. So minimum phase system are also called minimum energy delay system. This inequality is shown in the problem 5.65 of our textbook. It's our discussion on minimum phase systems.